Hello guys and welcome in today's episode. I'm Alex and today I have a very nice surprise for you which is the Samsung Odyssey OLED G8 gaming monitor. Alright, so great things to mention with this OLED panel in a nutshell and of course we have to start with the stunning display right here. It doesn't really matter if you are into gaming or if you are into productivity, whatever the reason that uh, well you are considering this monitor is. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It is a stunning display to look at. It's very accurate and of course it has a very low latency. Wow! Uh, yeah, that is the term. Wow! I can't really express the feeling that I have with this monitor. This is my brand new monitor and basically in a nutshell this GA OLED panel is absolutely fantastic to look at. That's because it features of course first of all uh, a 34 inch QD OLED panel that has a maximum refresh rate of 175 Hertz. Not only that, but it comes with a 1800R curvature. Uh, it gives you a resolution of 3440 by 1440p and it's absolutely astonishing to look at. And not only that, but it is absolutely fast. So yeah, you get an extremely fast OLED gaming monitor if you want to do that. And if you are kind of looking on from the sidelines and thinking, what does this 1800R exact curvature mean? Well, take a look right here and we have a side by side with a regular flat screen. Now do keep in mind this flat screen isn't exactly as big as this monitor right here but it should get you in the ballpark of getting yourself a general idea about, uh, well, about this curvature. With this product right here, you get in the box the all-needed mini display port to full display port cable that has a length of 1.5 meters. And as well, this being a curved monitor, you get the much-needed vase mount adapter just in case you want to use it with a monitor arm. Also, you do of course get a very well-built stand that's made out of metal that does, however, require two screws for the base in order to put it together, but it does click in very nice and quick to the back of the monitor without any extra screws for the final assembly. Another very nice surprising thing to find in the box here is of course the remote control, but do keep in mind that this monitor can pull double duty as a TV due to the Tizen OS installed on it, and this being the case, of course the inclusion of this remote control in the package is a very nice addition. All these things that I have just mentioned could be called optional, but it's very nice that you get them with your package. As for the other two items are quite mandatory, this being of course the power brick and of course the power cord that connects the power brick to the outlet. Yes, it would be nice to have a higher refresh rate, but this is a QD OLED panel with a response time gray to gray of 0.1 milliseconds. So you're absolutely going to get no blur if you want out of games or movies because those pixels are actually so fast they're switching their position and uh, well very accurately being able to display very fast whatever the color it is required out of it that you know you are getting a high refresh rate which is 175 hertz and it definitely feels more snappier to the naked eye than maybe some uh, traditional IPS panels which go all the way up to 240 hertz. As a side note here, of course it doesn't really matter how high the refresh rate can go if you can't cover up uh, that refresh rate with a decent sized GPU. So if you are running games in 4K and uh, achieving something like 75 to 80 FPS, then definitely you are not even taking advantage of this 175 Hz refresh rate of this panel, let alone a panel of rated, uh, I don't know, of 240 and higher. Other things that this monitor features are, of course, its integration with AMD FreeSync Premium Pro. It has HDR True Black 400. It features HDR10 as well. And you do get that upgraded Core Sync, which is named Core Lightning Plus. And that basically just throws a bunch of diffuse light on the back of the monitor. So as long as you have the monitor facing maybe a white wall, like most of the people, then you should get some very decent immersion into whatever you're watching on the screen. It also has Wi-Fi 5, unfortunately no Wi-Fi 6 on this monitor, but it doesn't really matter. This is only there to update the monitor to the latest uh, version. So Samsung did plan this quite well in advance, I would say, and I would give them a really nice thumbs up for that because it makes the whole process of updating the monitor very nice and easy. And uh, with only a few clicks, you're on your way to updating the monitor and keeping it updated with the latest firmware that Samsung is going to release in the future. And not only that, but given the fact that this monitor runs on Tizen OS, 
as well. So this has a, a dual capability of actually being a monitor and not only that, but it can actually be a display as well. And you have access to apps like Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Hulu, HBO, and so on and so forth. And all of this comes down to featuring that Wi-Fi 5 capabilities where you don't have to actually hook up any sort of cables to the monitor because you're automatically connected to the internet and you can do with it as you please. So this monitor can pull double duty because of its Tizen operating system that is installed in modern TVs nowadays. And of course, uh, featuring Tizen OS, you are going to have some integrated storage in this monitor as well, and that is limited to two gigabytes. But that's pretty much enough if you are just planning to watch some Netflix, Hulu, and The Bunch, and even if you're planning to install and download NVIDIA GeForce now and maybe try out some games that way. Oh, I should say right here that due to the support of Tizen OS and basically being able to run like a modern TV, of course you're going to get a remote control with this guy. Another very nice inclusion with this monitor right here and I was actually impressed and amazed at the same time because I didn't think that this is possible. It's actually the fact that it features two 5 watts each speakers on each side and they actually manage to sound quite decent as long as you don't blast them to the max so i would say anywhere in between 0 to 75 percent of its volume rate hey, they actually sound quite decent so in lack of anything else you can definitely use those speakers and that is a pretty nice addition from samsung not only that but samsung also thought this out and gave you the capability of actually connecting bluetooth speakers to this monitor so if you have anything that sounds quite decent bluetooth wise you can definitely hook them up to this monitor and get an enhanced sound experience that way. The design of this OLED panel, it's absolutely amazing. Kudos to Samsung because they did something that I encourage most manufacturers to do nowadays, and that is to remove the power supply completely from the monitor assembly. Because they went this route of removing the PSU from the assembly, they've actually managed to do a couple of things. First of all, they made the package a lot lighter without it being in there. So that's maybe probably around 350 to 500 grams in weight that they have been able to remove. Not only that, but they were able to make the design uh, thinner uh, than otherwise if you'd had that power supply in there. And also they've managed to make the design, or I should say the monitor much quieter. Because nowadays you have to keep in mind that most flat screens TVs and even monitors feature some sort of fan assembly built into them in order to dissipate that heat and of course if you are going to have something like 150 watts of power brick inside there it's going to generate a lot of heat that has to be removed and maybe you can find yourself at times where you can hear a slight fan kicking on from the device and that's a bit unexpected from a monitor for some of you and that can be you know a deal breaker for many people who are absolutely looking for a silent product to look at and not only that but uh, there is another extra advantage by using aluminum instead of plastic with this monitor and that is of course the i should say natural heat convection or i should say natural heat dissipation of the product just by itself with the use of aluminum versus plastic the stand that you get with this device is absolutely amazing and it does feature one screw that you have to screw in by yourself I know, like a peasant, but uh, yeah, I mean, let's face it, it's not that big of a deal. But anyway, it is made out of aluminum, it is absolutely amazing, it is very sturdy as well, and it just clips onto the back of the monitor right here with only one satisfying click. With the monitor installed on the stand, of course, you get tilt, pivot, and height adjustment, but unfortunately, there is no swivel side to side with this monitor. This, of course, being a real-world review where I show you a product, we are going to have some cons as well alongside all those pros with this monitor. Now, for some of you, these might be like, meh, not such a big thing, but of course, there are going to be people out there who are going to be very pissed off with this, and I would rather let everybody know what they can expect before buying this device. So, this being a QD OLED panel, it features something very unique to it, and that is its triangle sublayer uh, pixel arrangement, which can give jagged edges on fine fonts, and due to its layout, it can also, on sharp lines, render very uh, distracted green and pink outlines. Now, this is not something major. I haven't been able to detect this with the naked eye, or unless I actually stick my eyeball and press it on the screen, 
but uh, definitely I would say that if you haven't known about this beforehand, your chances to see it would have actually dropped considerably. Uh, another more pressing issue with this monitor right here is if you are planning to use it in a setup where you cannot control the lights. Um, this is because of its brightness. It has a peak brightness in uh, SDR which is rated all the way up to 250 nits or 250 candlelight per square meter. But uh, yeah, that is not nearly as decent as it should be. Now, if you are planning to watch movies and play games, a recommended uh, brightness would be of around 500. This can only go in SDR to as high as 250. Now, this isn't even remotely a problem in a, an environment where you can control the lights. Like, I don't know, putting it inside a room where you can have curtains and pull the curtains in very, very sunny days. And uh, I would say in the worst case scenario where you have the monitor facing a window where you have the sun just blowing through the window and bouncing off the screen. But uh, if you don't have it in such an arrangement, in such a room, then everything is fairly nice. Another thing that I want to mention here, it's actually the strange port configuration that Samsung decided to go with. Uh, you get a mini display port 1.4 that you actually get included in the bundle with a 1.5 meter long cable that features the, well, of course, mini display port on one side and a full display port on the other side. That's very nice that they include this cable because otherwise it can be a bit of a pain and a hassle to find a good quality cable out there uh, with a longer length in case your setup needs it. And alongside with this mini display port 1.4, you do get one micro HDMI 2.1 and two USB-C ports with one of them featuring charging capabilities of up to 65 watts. But this once again depends on the type of cable that you are going to use. I'm not saying that you should go out there and buy $100 worth of cables, but definitely don't cheap out and buy two, $3 cables from AliExpress and expect them to work right out of the box and provide you that 65 watts of power through the USB-C of this monitor. All right, so all is nice and well said in this review so far. And I think that we covered most of the technical aspects of this display, but this still leaves one thing that is very important to all of you. And I know it was important to me. So let's get down to business and test out this display. Let's throw some games at it. Let's see exactly how it looks and let's see exactly how that core sync light on the back does its job while gaming and looking at some content like movies. And uh, let's see exactly how immersed you get in the overall experience using this QD OLED panel. So this is Horizon Zero Dawn. I know it's a bit of an older title by now, but it looks absolutely amazing on this OLED panel. Uh, you have all the bells and whistles, you have HDR enabled. It looks absolutely amazing in person. Uh, it truly really does this game justice. I mean, these OLED panels are definitely something else. You can see contrast, you can see the depth of the colors. It is absolutely stunning to look at and it definitely makes the whole experience so much nicer when playing games on this panel. Not only that, but of course you have that core lighting on the back of the display as you can see right here. So let's see if we are moving the picture around in the game, what happens with the light on the back there. So it should kind of change color and it, it does. I don't know how well the camera can pick this up, but uh, yeah, this is definitely how it looks. And I can tell you guys that in person it looks absolutely amazing. With faster paced games, this monitor really comes into its own. And as you can see, this QD OLED panel right here looks absolutely apart from anything else. It is definitely wonderful to play. The immersion factor, it's increased with that uh, core lighting on the back of the monitor. And not only that, but uh, given its definite raw size with the fact that it's uh, having this 1800R curvature, it's definitely something that will get you quite immersed in whenever when whatever you are doing with this monitor. Racing sims feel amazing. Uh, games such as Horizon Dawn look quite amazing and even shooters I pretty much bet that they are going to look absolutely uh, astonishing. With all this real estate available to you, definitely when it comes to video editing, this is going to be in a league of its own. I definitely recommend if you are into video editing or photo editing to try out an OLED panel, especially a curved one like this one right here. And definitely you can't go wrong when you are going to choose this panel right here because it's definitely going to make the whole experience so much lighter or I should say so much easier to work with because you have everything available in your field of view and uh, you can definitely set up everything the way you want to without even having to turn your head. I mean it's absolutely amazing, the colors are absolutely great and it does a great job of video editing as well. 
Guys, even though you watch a ton of reviews out there, there might be questions that you have unanswered. So don't forget to drop your questions down in the box below. I will always answer each and every one of you guys. And uh, since I have this product for bought for my own use, I will have it on hand so I will be able to answer each and every question that you might have. If you think you have learned anything out of this review, then definitely do me a solid and subscribe to the channel. That would help me out tremendously. And thank you once again for being awesome and sticking with me until the end and see you guys in the next one. Peace.